I had an insight that psych meds, in a way, are artificial thought because the process that is induced by the universe on the brain is actually something that's beyond thought, which makes up the personal self. It's non-personal, and it's a non-personal process that gets rid of some of that personal stuff, or all of it temporarily, and we're temporarily disoriented. But in a way, taking psych meds after is a way to maintain an artificial self, a functional center. It's to prevent that universal process from happening, which makes us somewhat disidentified from our personal selves and act non-personally. But the structure of society as it is doesn't know how to respond to people that are acting in this non-personal way. And it eventually gets to a place where that non-personal person is feared. And then that non-personal person responds to that fear and then it looks like that person has a personal problem when really it's a non-personal problem. It's a problem of how to be in this society, in this non-person state. And I was thinking about how we speak the language of thought in relationship of memory past and the personal self. And I was wondering if one can speak the language of insight and Gaia and insight into nature and just keep speaking that language. It's a different way of relating. It's relating one's perceptions, not relating based on past images. And I'm also wondering if I can share some of my insights to myself during the day in self-dialogue instead of writing them down or saving them for later. We'll see. I was thinking about the concept of healing and how we need healing because we're not playing. And how mania is failed attempts at play. And treatment is to trick us back into the old tricks of society's meaningless meanings. It's re-meming our re-meming process. And I wonder if we were on our original childlike trajectory, would we need healing? And I wrote down, we don't need supervision, we have supervision. As in super space vision. And I've been thinking about communication Though I haven't really unfolded what I'm thinking about it in particular, even though all of this is communication. And I looked up the term nature mysticism. And I think that describes reading nature and giving voice to nature and understanding and learning from nature. And I was listening to a talk about spiritual emergency and how the Brazilian spiritist paradigm feels like sometimes it's suppressed mediumship, meaning the spiritual emergency or so-called psychosis is a result of suppressed mediumship or 
Maybe another way to say that is being highly sensitive and not using those gifts. But in terms of suppressed mediumship, I was thinking to play with those words, I was thinking we are the mediumship or we are the medium's ship. And by that I mean the medium is life and we are the vehicle of that life. So we are the medium's ship. Not just that we have mediumship, but we are the medium's ship and we're not really using that ship wisely. It would be like having a ship on the sea or actually trying to put a car on the sea. It's the wrong ship for that medium. We are the vehicle of human life and we are using that life wrongly and then we need healing and then we need mediums to help us heal when really the medium is life and we're just not translating that life with our vehicle of the life that we're given. If we use a ship to try and drive through the sand, it's going to need healing, it's going to need fixing. But if the ship is in the right medium, we don't need any kind of healing or any kind of mediumship. We have the wrong meanings and then we need healing from wrong meanings. If we weren't programmed with wrong meanings, we wouldn't need healing. And all that really needs healing is perception. Because if we can see, we can make meaning. Not be healed from bad meanings, just to have new programmed meanings superimposed over old, obsolete meanings that only has limited value. We only need perception moment to moment to see what things really mean. And moment to moment, to make sense with our senses. We're not able to make sense with our senses because we're not sensing with our senses. We're superimposing thought structures and that blocks our senses. And because our senses are blocked, we can't make meaning. And because we can't make meaning, we need healing. And I feel like I want to unfold further this whole notion of insight. An insight, perception, and intelligence are closely related. If one can have insight, that means one has perception. And perception is utilized by intelligence. But I feel like insight is a deprogramming language, whereas thought structures are programs. And I thought of an interesting term profoundly crazy because I'm a crazy person yet maybe I'm saying some things that are profound but maybe not but anyway it's more of a play on words that I'm profoundly crazy whether or not anything that I say has any kind of profundity maybe it has pro fun in it as in for having fun and I was thinking about thought and how we feel like thought is actually healthy except when it gets too extreme. We feel like it's okay if we have so-called healthy thought and it's sort of like playing in a stream and thinking, oh this is fun playing in a stream, but if it's a raging river then it's too scary. But it's all the same stuff and a stream can turn into a raging river through the powers of the universe. I feel like insight, when one has perception and insight, it produces high quality sound and not the noise of the ego. And I was thinking about how when the ego voice inside is turned up, then more of our brain capacity is on that. So our vision is turned down. But when the sound inside, the interpretation, the map thought inside is turned down, then our eyes naturally have to be more watchful. Because it's like putting a blindfold on the ears. 
the noise is turned down inside on what we think is happening. And when that happens, we need to turn up our visual capacity to see what is actually happening in order to respond because we're not responding in accordance with our programming. And I was thinking about when we hear sound on the outside and we don't know what it is, we look around to see what it is and we try to figure it out. Yet all the sounds that we have playing inside of our head are actually the opposite. They're all the things that we think we've already figured out. So the whole thought sound structure is something figuring that it has things figured out. And it tries to figure into the picture. And there are literally image sound figures in the moving picture of reality that have little to do with reality, but are figuring that they've figured it out. It's like this energy that figures it's figured stuff out, so it doesn't really have to look. Maybe it's lazy eyes. And so these sounds prevent listening with our eyes and ears and with our whole being in the present moment because these thoughts and sounds are a movement away from the present moment. The current light of the present moment is a current of learning delight. Learning is light and light is perception. Can we stream learning instead of streaming thought? Can we stream the mind? They talk about live streaming on the internet and thought is dead streaming. It's streaming old dead information through our brains. Thought is dead streaming, superimposing the old over the ever new present moment. It's actually a limiter. It's limiting the energy of consciousness, light, and the mind, and perception, insight, and intelligence. I feel like there is a switch for neurogenesis that has something to do with light and sound. So when our brains are in sound and in light dominant, when we have playing with light and sound in our consciousness, but it's old, recycled light and sound from memory. It's in a way recycling the brain cells. And I feel like the switch to neurogenesis is when the light comes in and there's perception and that alters the brain and helps it to grow. So it's this switch where instead of creating images with the sound of our thoughts, we're producing the sound of our voice in the moment with the light coming in of perception. I feel like there could be a genetic switch there. Because Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about how perception changes genetics. So that could even be at the cellular and DNA level, or even at the organismal level of actually perceiving with one's eyes.